Now, if you look at any standard textbooks, you'll see that the way they talk about market structures is almost a continuum, depending on the number of firms. Um, there's more competition if we have something like a perfectly competitive structure. There is less competition, effectively no competition, if we have monopoly, where there's just one firm. In most textbooks, the description of market structure moves from perfect competition through something that's either called imperfect competition or possibly monopolistic competition, then oligopoly, and finally monopoly. Now, the problem with, with this, this, this classification is it's quite useful for completeness, but some parts of it are very impractical. The whole notion of perfect competition is a very theoretical thing. You're not going to find perfectly competitive markets in practice. The, the, the market search that's close to perfect competition, monopolistic or imperfect competition, is also very unlikely to be found. So that leaves us two realistic market structures, oligopoly and monopoly. So in what I'm doing now, I concentrate on oligopoly and monopoly. I'm effectively not going to say anything more about perfect competition and nothing at all, I'm afraid, about monopolistic or imperfect competition. Right, so the classification depends on the degree of competition. And basically, the degree of competition depends on the number of firms. Primarily, it's the number of firms. The freedom of entry, how easy it is for other firms to get into the market, the nature of the product, the type of the product, whether, they, whether there's something intrinsic in the product that makes it difficult for other firms to copy, to reproduce, and so on and the price elasticity of demand. Those four things really define the market structure. So if I go on and pick the easy one to, to explain, monopoly. Now monopoly, hopefully it's fairly obviously, is just a single firm. Now in legal terms, in the European Union, North America, and the United Kingdom for example, um, monopoly is defined as a firm that has I think more than 25% of the market. But for this very theoretical way of looking at it. We're saying that a monopoly is a firm, there's just one firm in the market. And the characteristics here is that the firm can block entry of other firms in the market or can restrict their entry very greatly. That might be for very obvious reasons. For example, one firm owns, I don't know, all the coal deposits in the country, for example. So the only coal mining operation would be that firm. It just wouldn't be possible for another firm to compete in the market because they have they have, um, they have control of all the resources. Now, of course, that leads to the notion that the firm produces a unique product. It's only that firm that can produce the product. Now, the unique product might come about for legal reasons. Patent, for example. The firm might have a patent on a, on a product, which would mean that other firms could not produce that. Now, this is something to bear in mind when you're looking at this drugs market, the problem to thing you've been asked to look at. The drugs market is a market where each firm who develops a new, a new drug immediately patents that drug and that's to ensure that they can, they can stop the competition, the other firms in the drugs business from stealing their invention and making a profit from it from as long, for as long as possible. Now this combination of things leads to the notion that the demand curve is very inelastic. Really all that is saying is that given that there's only one firm producing this product, if you want to buy the thing, you have to buy from this firm. So that if they double their price, the amount demanded is going to decrease, but not decrease by that much, because after all, there's no substitute. There's nowhere else you can buy this stuff. So that leads to an inelastic demand curve. Now, if we look at the, the diagram, the diagram for monopoly, you know, if we look at the market diagram for monopoly, market diagram will have a supply curve and a demand curve. The supply curve in this case is the monopolist marginal cost curve. It's effectively the, the appropriately flat bit of, of the, the monopolist marginal cost curve. And that's because the monopolist is the only firm in the market. So total supply in the market is provided by the monopolist. Now the, the interesting thing about this is what that means for the monopolist in terms of making profits. If you look at some of the fairly standard treatment, um, where we get marginal cost and average cost, um, you will see that the monopolist 
By nature of the fact that they are monopolists and no one else can compete in the market that makes supernormal profits. Uh, perhaps supernormal profits needs, needs some greater explanation. Um, this is where the bit that I'm not doing comes into play, the, the notion of perfect competition, which perhaps you may need to look at in the textbook. In a firm that makes more than normal profits really is a firm that's not in perfect competition. Firms in perfect competition or in the long run can only make normal profits. A normal profit is, is simply defined as the profit that would enough to keep the firm in the market. It's the same amount of profit you would make, let's say, you put your money in another firm, you put your money in a bank and so on. It's the same sort of payment you would make by doing something else with your money. That's normal profits. Super normal profits is anything above that. And given the market conditions where a monopolist is the only firm in the market, they will make super normal profits. That's essentially what's going to happen here. And that's all this diagram suggests. The, the dark area, the grey area here is the super normal profits. Now, the difference between monopolists and the, our theoretical idea, which is the perfect competition, is that there is no, there is no other firm to enter the market and to take away the profits. If other firms could compete in this market, they would be able to see that the market is very profitable. I mean, it looks like about 50% profit here. So other firms, if it was possible, would enter the market to try and get some of that profit. But the monopoly structure, because the monopoly has some either legal or physical control over, say, resources, stops other firms entering the market. So the profits are not eroded in this market. And that is the big difference.